So, I was playing League of Legends one day, just warding the jungle when our eyes met. And I knew, I have to make Baron Usher. I'll start by making the Baron first, by adding some foil to a very janky looking wire armature. To help the clay stick to the foil, I'm covering it with Sculpey Bacon Bond and adding the base layer of clay. By the way, all the materials I use are always listed in the description below. You can also find some useful links down there, so feel free to look around. This is a great time to choke the sculpture with some wire, while he still doesn't have a face. To make the scales, it's just a process of adding clay strips and then smoothing them together until nice and smooth. Sometimes when making a sculpture, I can't get something to look like I want it to and it gets me really annoyed. And then the more I work on it, the more I want to punch it. This time it was this scaly stomach part, so I quickly connected it to the rest of the body and moved on. I kept coming back to it and fixing the scales throughout the whole sculpting process on days where my anger issues were less prevalent. While I was making the sculpture, I lacked the brain power to imagine that I could easily find a full 3D view of this guy, so for my references, I mostly relied on screenshots from in-game. Luckily, the Baron has enough brains for both of us. I added more clay around to make a brain sandwich and smoothed that into the rest of the body. He also has a wire in his back to support the sculpture for now. That hole will be plugged up after baking. Talking about plugs, if you didn't know, I have a Patreon where you can take a closer look at what I'm working on every week. I am also working on some exclusive video content for it, so if you want to support the channel and get some extra content, check out the link below. He also has spikes on his back. I added clay on a wire for strength and shaped it into a spike, adding some texture as well. I made three of those and then added them to his back. The top of his head is just some triangles that get smaller and connect into his little snout. His horns are also wire covered with clay that get added to his face. Then I'm adding texture to the top of his head and also some scrapes and damage from all the battles he's been in. People really love to challenge this guy, even when they know they can't beat him. Then I bulked up his jaw on the strangling wire and added thin pieces of clay to form his mouth. The inside of his mouth also gets some detail, but you can get a closer look at that once you're being eaten. The eyes have been pre-baked and then get attached to his face. This way I can sculpt around them without ruining their nice round eyeball shape. Then it's just a case of adding little clay strips and smoothing them with the rest of the face. One of his eyes has been damaged during battle, so it gets a big scar. The teeth have also been pre-baked. After adding his fangs, I attached the upper jaw. I later realized that I placed it wrong and shortened it down a bit. Then after many days of turmoil, I finally accepted the scales for who they are and added battle damage to them as well. Now all that's left is making Baron's sidekicks. Head number two and head number three. It's basically just a head on a stick. And again, it has a wire inside for stability. That gets attached to the barn and then I made another one for the other side. These guys also get teeth. I don't know why I didn't add the teeth before I attached them, but a lot of things I do don't make sense. For the Baron's legs, I pre-baked spikes on wires and then added the meaty parts later. 
those get put in place and I also added a bit of clay around them so it looks more natural. And the sculpting is done. Before baking, I went over it with isopropyl alcohol to smooth out the clay. After some time in the sauna, this guy is ready to get painted. I started with a base layer of dark purple and then added many different lighter tones all over. I was mixing the purple with blue, but the end result just turned out looking too blue. When I was done with the painting, I went over everything with a diluted purple to fix the tone, but I didn't film this part. Painting the mouths is a process that would definitely be easier with those fancy bent brushes. The teeth got painted yellowish with lighter tips. And I also added some red next to the roots to make them blend in more naturally. Or maybe it's just blood from his enemies. The scarred eye also gets some blood on it. The eyes themselves get painted dark green with a lighter green highlight. Except the damaged one, that one is brown. Then I went over them with UV resin. The stomach gets a grayish blue tone with shadows and highlights. The back is hard to see, but I also painted it with the same colors as I did the stomach. Then all that's left is painting the spikes, and we are done with the barn. Now, it's time to make the pit. At first, it just looks like a bunch of rocks, but it does have eight distinctive pillars, and that's what I'm going to start with. I'm using foam core for them, but sadly I only have a really thin foam left, so I'll have to glue a few layers together. To make them more sturdy and give them a more rock-like texture, I'm going over them with a plaster and glue mixture. And then a bit of sanding. Or maybe a lot. The details for the pillars are made with more foam core. Each pillar has its own design, but they are pretty similar. The rest of the rocks are also cut out of foam. Making these was like a puzzle mini game where you have to fit all of them together. I added some texture to them and then glued them together with the pillars. To hold everything together, I'm gluing all the pieces on another foam base. I taped paper around the whole thing so I could map out the size and design of the back wall. That got transferred to a 3mm foam core board. It's so thin that it can be bent a little bit without breaking. So I glued the whole thing around the pit. This would have been the perfect time to make sure I seal any gaps in the foam but I didn't, which will be a bit of a problem later when I pour resin. I went over the foam with a paint, plaster and glue mixture just to seal and strengthen the foam a bit more. I'm going over the outside of the foam walls with a plaster bandage to make them much stronger. 
If I was making the sculpture for myself, I would just leave the foam as it is, but this is being sold, so I would like it to survive shipping. The barn is coming out of the ground, breaking the surface, so I cut out foam pieces in a way that resembles that, and also added bigger rocks in the center. Now it's finally time to paint everything grey. I also went over all the rocks with a lighter dry brush, and then another more yellow dry brush. There is also a purple light coming from the underground. It looks very blue on camera though, but it is purple. The pillars also have different symbols on them. I don't know what they do, but I'm sure they have some use. The pit actually has quite a bit of greenery around it. I don't have a lot of flocking materials, so I'm just using some moss and fake grass. Lastly, I went over the floor with Mod Podge to seal the paint. This won't help with the sides I didn't seal earlier though. I glued in the barn, along with two other legs of his that are deeper in the ground. There are also some weapons in the pit from previous challengers. Pouring resin is always stressful, but it went pretty well. There was a tiny leak on the left side, but I fixed it as soon as it started. While that is curing, let's make some more weapons that are scattered on the pit walls, as well as a Baron's skull. The Baron used to look a lot different, but he got a big rework. They added the skull of the previous Baron in the pit as a little tribute. I might make another League sculpture in the future. I want to make a cool champion though, with a bunch of crazy details or weapon. If you have any suggestions on which one you'd like to see, leave a comment below. After three days of curing, we can finally touch this again. I glued on all the missing bits, and that's it. Huge shout out to my patron El Geisto for the continued support. If you'd like to join, the link is down below. And thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye!